allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to welcome you all to the January 23rd, 2024 uh, Rochester Common Council meeting. First of all, I want to, on a personal note, it's a, a high honor to be up here with all of you. I hope you see your position and uh, uh, as city council member, it's a high honor to serve this community. It's a great community. I look forward to working with you for the next four years. I want to thank all of you for coming. Uh, welcome uh, the county representative Rick Grandstead with us this evening. So. I want to welcome you all here. Um, before we go any further, uh, we need to have an election of our president. So I entertain any motion. I nominate Brian Gooden. I second. Okay, it's been properly uh, moved and seconded for Brian Goodman as president. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Vote. Go fast to six, seven, no. I'm not six zero. No. in the case of a tie. It's six zero. Seven no. Six zero. Because he abstained. One abstention. Oh, you're abstained. Oh yeah, you're because you're the one. Thank you. Yeah. So, welcome again, Brian. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to mention just a um, a public hearing that's going to be coming up in our next meeting on February 28th. It'll be properly posted ahead of time. Um, it has to do with, uh, I believe, uh, attaching solar panels to a building. I can't re remember exactly which one it is now, but that's properly <coughs> noticed, uh, put on notice ahead of time. That I wanted to, we got notice of it yesterday, so we'll mention it tonight. New business. Um, what did I miss? Oh, skip the minutes. Skip the minutes tonight. <coughs> Uh, we need, have you had a chance to look over last month's minutes? Yes, Any additions or corrections to the minutes? Okay, need a motion to approve those. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded to approve uh, last month's December 19th, I believe, minutes. All in favor, raise your right hand. Pass the 7 0. I'm covered up there now. Okay, new business. Uh, in your packet, there is a scholarship proposal. This was kind of my idea. I ran through Jan Vance and also the government teacher at Rochester High School. This is what I thought I had last summer. Uh, I'd like to get the kids more involved, the high school kids more involved in our government, more involved in our community. Uh, I think they need to be heard. I think we need to hear from them. So the idea I had was to have an essay through the government class, and I just put in a 500, 750 word essay, anonymously submitted to us as a council. Uh, the government teacher would know the identity of each uh, entry and it, it would be a voluntary thing. It would be available to, to high school seniors in uh, government class, spring and fall, so that there'll, there'll be one award for a year, and we would uh, present that award at the honors night, uh, which I think is in April, if I remember right. And uh, there again, it's kind of keep local government in touch with our youth, their ideas, uh, their dreams they have for our community, but it also lets them know that we're interested in, in what they think. So uh, what my idea was would be a first place winner. We would all read these uh, and then get together and select a first place winner. It would be $1,000 for scholarship, second place 500, third place would be 250. Then uh, that would come out of the mayor's promotional fund, I believe. Uh, Beth and I talked about that. Uh, do you have any problem with that, Andy, that you know of? First I've heard of it. Okay. But so say yes, no, no problems, right? No, that I know. You're good? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, discussion on that? I guess my, my first thought would be, I understand what a scholarship is. Is it meant to be applied just towards secondary education? Or if somebody's not going to college, what's, are they, do they forfeit that? Uh, that's, what, what are your, what's your thoughts? I mean, well, I, do, we, do we give them just $1,000 or do we apply it towards further education? 
Oh, I, I'm just wondering what, what the thought I, was. I, I actually had to cross my mind. Cross my mind. Yeah. Someone wants to do. How about vocational? Okay. Or, but if they, I don't want to say it the wrong way, but say if they, if they want to go into farming, that's what they're going to do, but they write the best essay. So that, no, no further indication. They've already learned all the vocational stuff by the time they're 18. My personal so, opinion is we give them $1,000 and we don't, we don't ask where it's going to go. Well, I don't know because because the thing about education is not education is supposed to open the mind. So even if you're a farmer, there's farming degrees out there. There's very specific well, farming know. degrees yeah. out there, Absolutely. right? So even if you're a farmer, if you can take this thousand dollars and take one and take one class. Sure. Maybe that can open your mind to expand the farm that you're inheriting or the farm that you have been working all of those years to to accomplish something even better than what dad thought of because he didn't get that education. No, I know. I, I agree with so that. It, so it would be cool to say at least prove to put it towards some type of a class, a, a, a degree. I mean, who knows? A farmer might, be, might do good at taking a welding class. I mean, in all reality, because farmers weld too. I mean, they gotta fix their stuff. Now, um, why you know. Well, farmers. <laughs> well, because <laughs> he's <laughs> <said, laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just sitting here. I'm just sitting here smiling. I'm waiting. Yes, exactly. But it's good. I, I and I think that maybe it, because regardless of what you plan on doing as an adult. So some some form of advances. Some form. Yeah. But what if we don't know that this is just a thought out of the blue? So what if somebody doesn't have the opportunity to attend a class? What if it is something simple as it needs to go towards postgraduate career path? So let's say somebody chooses to go into the restaurant business like Ruth and directly goes there. So maybe that money could be spent towards providing uniforms or something along the lines of that. I, my concern, and I understand what Brian is saying, but there are many postgraduate paths. I mean, it would be nice to go towards education, but if somebody is unable to do that, then how do we make sure that we're... Well, well I, you know, honestly, honestly, had somebody given me some extra money at the very beginning of uh, right out of school, what if that changed my career path just a bit? To say, I mean, because it took me five years to want to go to college out of high school because of where I come from and 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 it was where I worked that 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 really put that pressure on it wasn't because of my family my my friends and all of that other stuff I mean shoot they were just proud that I graduated high school uh, <laughs> so I have a bachelor's <laughs> so going back to, to so yeah like what, what Marty has had to do subject matter here is for, for they get a thousand dollars for best usage oh there you go that's a good way to write well, yeah and I you know because you somebody there's a lot of ways that they could you have best usage for the fun for the money i mean honestly we can't sit up here and govern how they're going to use it really i, I was going to say right. no, i was right. just going to monitor it. we're not going to we can't split hairs on this i don't think i think we no. kind of let the government teach another hey this is for the purpose of advanced education or whatever that student needs to move himself forward and, and they can kind of monitor that some, but we can't do that from this panel, I don't think so. Right. Uh, so, are, Did any I, other that's why, I, are you married to the fact of giving it to, to the winner? For, for an education or just to the winner? To the winner and let somebody else. Somebody might be going to the military. Right. Exactly. Fully. That's why. And need it for just. In the earnest of, of the money. Right. Uh, Right. Money. If you yeah, get out, you're going to work no yeah. I, I love the idea. I think it's great that, no that we would support the government class and have that competition. But I wouldn't tie it to education. Okay. And that's just, you've got an essay contest, here are the prizes. And okay. uh, everybody. Uh, I don't like it. Okay, so we need a motion on this then. So moved. I second. John Garrett moves and Amy seconded. Any further discussion? And it, it is coming out of the mayor's. Yeah, budget. the mayor's promotional fund, yeah, which is like a ten thousand item fund. Twenty fourth budget. So. Yeah, really like that. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so all in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Pass a 7 0. Okay, then we've got to kind of go through the appointments on the Redevelopment Commission. Uh, there has been one change, actually two, but the one was uh, Katie Miller stepped off and the high school appointed Ethan Gaudier. That's how you pronounce that. Is it Gaudier? To set in her stead. So oh, Gaudier, sorry. <laughs> the uh, replacement for Brett Kernett, which is now on the Board of Works, is going to be Guy Bigler. I appointed him. Uh, do we need to vote on any of this or just just mention? No, it's your appointment. These appointments, it's the mayor appointment. The mayor appointments, no. Yeah. So there is some, uh, I'm trying to look here. Okay. The rest of them, I assume, Ruth, do you know anything different? No one's come to me and said they wanted to step off, so we're going to reappoint, uh, I'm going to reappoint Todd Beeler, that's a mayor's appointment, and Phil Bowers. The council needs to appoint Ruth Gunter and Mark McCall. So do we need to move and motion that then? We're going to hear a campaign speech at all. We're going to hear a campaign speech. We don't want to get her started. <laughs> 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 but no, no, the redevelopment team, um, uh, is, is definitely going to move forward with a lot of improvements towards the community, work together with the county and, and, and the um, uh, new um, um, downtown partnership and everything else to move things forward and actually see Rochester as a place to come to. And, and that's what I'd like to be all part of. You know, we are going to get the Nickel Plate Trail going and, and look at other trails and parks to to create a whole city that's involved. I don't have an issue with either of our appointments as long as we're willing to serve again. If we agree what? I know we had talked about potentially switching. Is that, is that a personal? This is redevelopment. This, this, this is redevelopment. Okay. I'll get to that in just a okay. second. Okay. So, um, we need a motion to go ahead and approve Ruth Gunter and Mark McCall back on the Redevelopment Commission for another year. So moved. Bob Second. Kennedy moves. I'll Brian second. seconded. All in favor, raise your right hand. Time moves. No. no. Fast 6-0. Okay. Um, the appointment of committees, everybody's, uh, Bob's on the parks board, John's on the water board, Brian, is on Fedco, Mart. Council on Aging and uh, Rochester BZA. Okay, and Brian? Tree board and DMS. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ruth and you were on the solid, no, you were on the I, I was zoning. On, I was on zoning. And Amy would like to have zoning and me on solid waste because I have a few ideas for solid waste and working together again with the city. Is everybody comfortable with uh, where they sit on the boards? Where's that lead animal adoption center? The same. I think I, from what Ruth and I discussed, she wanted solid waste. I would take the area plan and the animal adoption, I believe. Is that okay? We don't need to vote on that, do we? It's just a. I think there's a main. <laughs> Sorry. No, I think that. Okay, I'm going to turn the rest uh, of the ordinance over to Brian. <clears throat> We've been uh, talking the last couple of meetings about the, uh, the Jake Rake ordinance. We asked last month that you need to create one for us, so here we have it. Um, any further discussion on this one? Questions? Um, I, I, I just know that somebody told me, a truck driver said, when that Jake brake needs to be used, it'll be used. So <laughs> just know that it'll be used. <laughs> so. Well, the ordinance allows for emergency. I, I mean, right. We don't define emergency, so. Okay. Well, I've driven semis a long time, and they're mostly there to 
make the driver feel cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, on a flat in a flat area, you don't really need them. It's just uh, I've gotten by without them most of the time. One time I ever use it, but I just want to hurt myself or impress somebody. So uh, I'm for the ordinance. It does make a lot of noise coming into town. I did talk to the county. We got one area that we think we might want to put the sign out into the county, which would be a North Old 31 coming into town, mm -hmm. and they're okay with that. Uh, the South Old 31 coming in, we could. It's kind of a dead area as far as residents, and once you get in the city limits, so we could put that in city limits. The rest of them would have to be uh, approved by NDOT. If I'm correct, they're all built state highway, so um, signage wouldn't be an issue. So I guess <coughs> the discussion is, do we want to? Uh, do that or not. I see any okay, well, we have a, an ordinance here. I'll obtain a motion for the re first reading of Ordinance 1 2024. So moved. Second. Move second. All those in favor? You did say by title only, right? Yes. I did. <laughs> ordinance number 1 2024, an ordinance regarding the use of compression brakes by motor vehicles. Further discussion? Entertain a motion for the second reading of Ordinance 1 2024. So moved. Second. Move and second. All those in favor? <clears throat> Ordinance number 1-2024, an ordinance regarding the use of compression brakes by motor vehicles. Um, entertain a motion for the third reading. So Title only or the entirety? I would read this in its entirety, the third reading. Move and second, all those in favor? All right, ordinance number 1-2024, one an ordinance regarding the use of compression brakes by motor vehicles. Whereas the Common Council of the City of Rochester has determined that the use of compression brakes, also known as Jake brakes, on certain vehicles in the City of Rochester has increased in frequency, and whereas the Common Council has determined that said usage constitutes a loud, unnecessary, excessive, or unusual noise that annoys, disturbs, and endangers the comfort, repose, and peace and quiet of city citizens, and whereas the Common Council has determined that to protect the public's health, and welfare and the quiet enjoyment of common areas, the use of compression brakes should be prohibited within the city limits except in the case of an emergency. <clears throat> Entertain a motion for the adoption of Ordinance 1-2024. I'll move. I'll second. Move and second. All those in favor? All right. Thank you. Okay, then we have Ordinance 2-2024, amendment to purchasing policy. Um, we just did this one at the last meeting. Can you, Beth, can you tell us what the correction Yeah, there was, um, there were, um, in the purchasing one, there were some inconsistencies. There were some things that were left out that I put in. Uh, there were some typographical errors in the dollar amounts that was not here, but Dwayne po pointed out. So I fixed all that and then added a, paragraph regarding um, not being able to break up a purchase so that you fall beneath the thresholds from an internal control perspective. So that was the only changes. Does anyone have any questions? Comment? I say, I, we just went through that training and all of this brought back all the training, so I felt like it was a good representation of what they say that we're supposed to do. Make a motion by title only. Thank you. Second. Move and second. All those in favor? Ordinance number 2-2024, Amendment to the City of Rochester Administrative Capital Asset Policy, City Code 35.3 and Ordinance 10-2023. Entertain a motion for the second reading by title only of Ordinance 2-2024. So moved. Second. Right, let's move and second it. All those in favor? 
Ordinance number 2-2024, amendment to the City of Rochester Administrative Capital Asset Policy, City Code 35.3 and Ordinance 10-2023. Any further discussion? Entertain a motion to suspend the rules and read Ordinance number 2-2024 by title only. So moved. I'll second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Ordinance number 2-2024, amendment to the City of Rochester Administrative Capital Asset Policy, City Code 35.3 and Ordinance 10-2023. Entertain a motion for the adoption of Ordinance 2-2024. So moved. I'll second. It's moved and seconded. All those in favor? story with the purchasing yes entertain a motion for the first reading of ordinance 3-2024 by title only I'll move I'll second. Second. second moved and seconded all those in favor ordinance number 3-2024 amendment to the city of Rochester purchasing policy and ordinance 9-2023 entertain a motion for the second reading of ordinance 3-2024 Second. Title only? Yes. Move and second it. All those in favor? Ordinance number 3-2024, amendment to the City of Rochester Purchasing Policy and Ordinance 9-2023. <clears throat> Any discussion questions? I, I have a question. I don't know if there's an easy answer for it, but just for clarification on uh, Page two of seven, when it, it breaks down the authority to purchase into uh, categories uh, based on cost. So the procedure for B and C, which C is uh, five over five thousand, but less than seventy-five thousand, and B is over seventy-five thousand but less than 150,000. The procedure's the same, except in B, we need a formal quote process, and in C, we need an informal quote process. I, I, I just wonder if there's an easy answer for the difference between those two. It's according to the code, it's, it's used that language, and it said, okay. it based on the, fact that it was of 150000 that you had to have a formal bid in accordance with that code. Um, and I can confirm, Marty, I had to attend that class, the purchasing of contracts and all of this aligns with what they had shared, the attorney who had presented the, it seems very cumbersome, but it is what they stated was Indiana code. So. I, I just noticed the requirements were the same other than that. The, the formal and right, I, thought, mm -hmm. I feel the same way when I was presenting, when I was participating in that class, it didn't make any sense. I don't know why it is the way it is, but that's how they presented it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. I have a question. My, I have, you know, on the ordinances, I've got the ordinance 2-24 is the capital assessment policy and it's number th ordinance Number three point twenty four on our agenda sheet. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. Well, but I, I sure I, don't want to get caught in it later on. Wait a we've had, and a lot of times I catch that on the emails or Marty usually oh, the fine you print. No, you're right. <laughs> but, uh, How embarrassing. Yes, that is right. I got turned. I mean when you read it by title only you read the right now. No. No, we didn't. We turned them around. You're right. Good catch. Um, well, so that's just on the right. Two dash twenty four. Two dash twenty four is the asset policy. Yeah. Three dash twenty four is the other one. Yeah. Then into which is what is later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay, let's just pause a moment. Did we read them correctly? According to 0224 was the capital asset policy. 
thought you read it. Yeah, 02 mm -hmm. 2024 is the capitalization policy, and you read it that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just the agenda's got the yeah. numbers wrong. Just the agenda, so that we should be fine. Okay. Yeah. I would think. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Ordinance number 3-2024, amendment to the City of Rochester Purchasing Policy and Ordinance 9-2023. All right, any other questions, discussion? Entertain a motion for the adoption of Ordinance 3-2024. So moved. Second. Let's move and second it. All those in favor? Twice. and bring up, is there any new business on the floor? And we're going to go into the department reports, uh, Fire Chief Butler. Hi, good evening. For the month of December, uh, field brush fires, uh, two in the city limits, auto fire alarms, three in the city, mutual aids, one in Union Township, one in Liberty Township, calls for smoke, one in the city, accidents, one in the city, one in Newcastle, four in Richland <coughs> Township, medical assist, 18 in the city, 13 in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. Gas leaks, one in the city, one in Richland Township. Canceled calls, six in the city, three in Rochester Township. We had a total of 57 calls and we conducted one night of training. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. Any questions from Chief? Thanks, Thanks Chief. Thank you, sir. Chief Shots. Uh, good evening. I'm not going to bore you by reading all of this. You've got a lot of information up there to go through. Um, quickly, for the month of December, there were 24 accidents, 64 warnings, 44 offenses, 30 case reports, 413 calls for service, 23 lockouts, uh, one tow vehicle, and 14 people incarcerated. You have the crimes that people are lodged for, and you have the breakdown of the stats from last year comparing to the previous four years. Uh, calls for service 6,283 for last year. And then you have crimes individuals were allowed for uh, by our officers for 2023 compared to 2022. If you guys have any questions, they have to answer them or try to answer them, but I'm not going to go through every one of them for you. Other than that, uh, Jonathan Easter is the one that we, the officer that we we're trying to get hired. Um, it's been a long, lengthy process, but I'm anticipating his start date to be February 5th. So that will put us up to full staff and looking forward to that. Questions? No, I just, uh, the warnings, that was fascinating to see. It went from 391 to, two, to 908. Got a lot of young officers. I just active. thought that same thing. Yep. They're very eager, so it's good. They're paying attention. Yep. So. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. <laughs> anybody else is representative, uh, represented, but uh, the county is represented tonight by Commissioner Rainstead. Do you have anything you'd like to add or say? Yes. Uh, well, thanks for having me. Welcome to everybody. Uh, ambulances, we extended the con contract negotiation to March 1st. Our attorney is done with our side of it. They sent it on to Lutheran. So. By March 1st, we should have everything wrapped up. We still have ambulance service until then. But uh, I know Akron's kind of waiting to get their ambulance back, and that won't happen to the contract sign. So they're kind of getting there. But other than that, I'm just here to see if you guys got any questions for me. And so they're going to go back to three ambulances? Three again? ambulances, yeah. Akron, Kiwan, and Rochester. Anything else for Commissioner Ramsdale? Thank, Thank you, you Rick. Thanks for coming. This is something we're going to do. Rick and I talked way last summer that uh, something we wanted to let the public know that we are working together with the county, and I'm going to give them an opportunity to speak at every council meeting, and they're going to give me an opportunity to speak at the commissioner's meeting or the county council, one or the other. Um, 
we are collaborating very well. Have some, have had some great conversations. So, uh, looking forward to a great relationship with the county. Okay. <coughs> Ruth, do you have anything on the Area Planning Commission? It was canceled last night because the news said that we were going to be in a major ice storm. Anybody believed it? <laughs> <laughs> Brian Goodman, you're in on Fedco. Uh, Michael, would you like to? Um, just two things update. Ready to, uh, the application <coughs> is due February 15th, so uh, the regional group is working on that. And then there's um, this county commissioners have passed on first and second reading uh, Who's Your Homes project program, which is a financial program that helps uh, new and re existing homeowners uh, with their costs uh, in purchasing a home, whatnot. We've got the study coming in. I'm working with the HUD group to uh, get that active. We have a site selection that we've decided on at least just to start with uh, it's not anything in concrete or anything so those are the two major things that are working there's a lot of other little projects going on but they're all on the drawing board wouldn't be worth discussing right now so that's that's really what we have if there's any questions I'm more than happy to answer thank you would you mind go ahead and sharing about Charlie acquisition to our economic development team the city and the county have gone together and hired Charlie Sparks. Um, Charlie lives in Fulton County now on the lake. And I've known Charlie since uh, I was in East Chicago in the 80s and he was at La Porte Chamber. Um, Charlie, and we need more than one person and we always have needed more than one person working in economic development. It's a team sport when you finally come down to it. And Charlie is a great addition to uh, this team. He's sharing an office with me right now down at 822. And um, I have no problem saying that the two EV plants that are in Kokomo are there because of Charlie Sparks. Uh, he's got about 40 years worth of experience in bringing businesses in. Um, we're already working. I'll just go ahead and add to this then. We started out with a hundred acres on the industrial park south of town. Right now we're probably negotiating an area of 200 acres with the possibility of probably going up to about 250 acres. Um, this is one of the ready two projects that we've asked for. One, the other is uh, a school daycare center for uh, out at, out at uh, the high school. Um, this is quite an addition to the to the group um, and for us to go from 100 acres into almost 250 acres in a very short time I mean we're talking weeks you know that's that's quite something and that's that is um, a tribute to Charlie's skills on, on talking to the mayor's skills because he's deeply involved in all this as well so that's where we're sitting at this point we've just doubled the team and and it's a strong team it's a good partnership that we've got going on right now we're working with the county and with the city and uh, I can honestly say that relations have improved all around since January 1 and I'm looking forward to continuing it I might add the county voted to pay half of Charlie's salary. The uh, Redevelopment Commission will be picking up the other half of his salary. I will say that in my, and I've been to several training exercises or two or three day stints uh, in the last two months um, in talking to other mayors and other uh, uh, leaders around the state. They're very jealous of our team we have here. Uh, many of them have known Mike for many years and uh, even more have known Charlie for many years. And, they get along great, us three get along great. There is a lot on our plate right now that we're looking at, a lot of opportunity. Uh, I mean, even this week, there's, it seemed like things have doubled as far as the, the number of things we're looking at. And so most uh, counties have uh, multiple members of their economic development team. And it's obvious that uh, we have a great team and other communities will say that. So I'm excited about where we're headed. So thanks, Mike, appreciate yep. it. That concludes my report. <laughs> <laughs>
Ed Richard are two new members. They joined Mitch Hayes and Alex Berlin. There's a lot of discussion at that meeting, a lot of thoughts and ideas floated around. Um, they talked about possibly a new pole barn, uh, looking into that for storage of equipment. There was more discussion about the barn and uh, windows, as well as uh, cart paths and the pool and some lighting. Uh, and there was also pretty much there was a vote on the summer park program and they are planning to bring the summer park program back and there was also discussions still about the uh, beach area and trying to uh, get that revamped a little bit cleaned up we talked earlier uh, about involvement with the high school and and uh, government is there still a high school student on the park board she was not in attendance, I don't believe, this last week. <coughs> I'll, make, I'll make a note of that. I'm meeting with uh, Janet and Oscar, I don't know, tomorrow or Thursday, and I'll ask them about because I think she may have graduated midterm. at midterm. So that sounds familiar. I'll make a note of that. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. But Along those lines, a little bit, is, is the reason I'm having a meeting with them is uh, I'm one of Bring in a uh, called mayor mayoral youth advisory council, uh, which is a nine some the city I'm familiar with has a nine student advisory council. They kind of have their own meetings, but one of those members of that council will will come to each of these board, you know, like tree board and the park board to be a representative. So we're hopefully take care of this um, if there's a vacancy there. By that means that may not come into play until fall next school year but that's where we're headed with that and it's been very uh, helpful in other communities uh, i know dave wood the mayor of uh, uh, mishawaka and steve mcmichael the mayor of new haven i've met with both of them and they're kind of guiding me down that road so we've got uh, we've got some neat things happen with our youth and i'm i know the high school is really excited about it <coughs> anything else bob uh, nope not this time unless i forgot something Mark, you got anything on the council on aging or BZA? Yes, the BZA meeting that was scheduled for tomorrow night has been canceled. The next meeting's in February, which in your packets, this time, for the first time, you, you saw the notice for what uh, the BZA will be talking about on uh, at next meeting. So, uh, And then uh, council on aging and transpo met yesterday. It was... Uh, a good meeting. We get, we had a uh, representative from Rio Logan there that's the overseer of uh, the operations at Folk County Council on Aging. Got a report. Uh, we're in good compliance. The county and us are on the same page. And uh, Amy was involved in that several meetings. Uh, so we're we're in good shape. We're working well with the S. We're working well with the county. Uh, Transpo did uh, have a situation where they dealt with uh, COVID that kind of went through the building for a week, so they were short on drivers <laughs> and a dispatcher for a week, but we're still averaging uh, a little over 200 trips a month more in 23 than we did in 22. So, um, Things are, they're still providing close to 2,000 trips uh, a month in at uh, Transpo. The other thing that uh, dealt with, uh, we're having some issues with the computer support team. We have used Josh Shriver uh, with the county. Uh, Josh is great. That he is so busy. I know I, I, he's just busy and he's not always available when uh, we need him at Council on Aging. So we're looking at maybe hiring that service done a little bit. And the other thing I'll put a plug in uh, for anybody listening uh, 
for RSVP. They do a, a lot of good things, but one of the things they provide in this community is a pretty robust travel opportunity uh, on group trips, bus trips uh, for people that uh, don't feel comfortable driving out of town or don't want to travel alone or whatever. And yesterday, Ann King handed out brochures on trips uh, for our encounter that's happening in April. They're going to a Missouri Star road trip uh, in the first part of April. They're going to have a trip to the Tournament of Roses Parade. And uh, they're going to Maine and Newport. These are trips that are already established and they are taking reservations for. And a trip to the Castles of New York. So far, that is what's being planned for 2024. And if there are any questions, anybody has interest, you just call RSVP. Get the information that you want to have. There are numerous day trips as well. I know they're going to beef and boards. That trip is sold out. They go to Ship Shawana. They go all kinds of places. So a lot of travel opportunity for those that don't feel comfortable going out of town or and their trips are open to anybody that wants to go so, so any age as a point of reference any age over 18. any age that's yeah. it you know since i saw those flyers i could probably use them at the restaurant and, and help advertise i tell people about it and and they don't know but but getting them to actually make that phone right. call is the biggie and to be involved right it, you know yeah because People all the time. I have a couple of tenants that I said, "You guys need to go up there." You know, you just do because it, you know you. I can't beat your social thing. I'm too busy. So you know, and, and yeah. So a couple of those and tell them to bring them by and I'll post them. Okay. And money goes back to the Council on Aging for those trips, correct? It's somewhat of a fundraiser. Is that correct? For the trips that they provide. Well, I've got to check with them. <laughs> I was going to say, I cause so. I when I sat on that board, I thought at some point that that's what Ann had said. It'd be nice to know that because that would be a nice selling point for individuals to potentially. Yeah. 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 It could be something in the recess of my brain that I made up, but. We, we get feedback from uh, folks that go on these trips, and they, they have a wonderful time. I mean, it is all taken care of. It's meals are arranged, hotels are arranged, and. Uh, you just get to go and enjoy, so. A way to get your parents up. Huh? Yeah, or even us. Mm -hmm. We're almost there. Uh, We're almost there. Any age for the age. Amy, do you have any animal adoption or? Uh, no. Okay. Tree board, Brian. Uh, tree board was not able to meet last month. They did not have a quorum. Okay. John, you got any on the water board? Yes, water board met, and uh, I think it would have hit for uh, uh, nominated Marvin for the president again of the water board. Cassie is the secretary again. Uh, Rachel Stevenson will be the board member. Uh, the cost of uh, service study, but can tell he's working on it. We'll be meeting with uh, Beth. That would have been last Thursday. And so we'll I'll find out more about that at a later date. As you drive update, the water main installation, pressure test, uh, both uh, back tea samples. Uh, have both passed. Everything is installed 100 percent. The copper program from uh, Commonwealth. Uh, waiting to hear back from Commonwealth on scheduling. Uh, the meeting with Derek. We have plans on the move for what probably is going to need to be done. Operator updates. Everything's going fine and dandy. Boys on vacation. Uh, was nobody. We all were in shock. And then Joe Murray was on vacation starting in February 1st. And uh, any questions? That's <laughs> Everything's run straight and that's running more. Derek does a great job. Uh, well, since it's January and uh, um, uh, Bob hasn't been on the board too long and Amy's new, I wanted to just give kind of a highlight on uh, open door law. 
and access to Public Records Act, I'm sure in your training they discussed that a little bit, was that as the person who would have to open the letter from the Indiana Public Access Counselor if there's a complaint, let me tell you how I look at it, the easy way to comply is, the good news is you're a seven member board, so uh, it's difficult for four of you as a majority to end up unintentionally in a place, but it's a small town, it's not impossible. So simply remember this, if four of you are in the same place, be it a football game or a church or whatever, do not discuss city matters. Your only discussion of city matters, in the, if, you're, if you're a majority, if you're at least four, should occur at these meetings, period, okay? Um, the, uh, uh, I, I know for a long time people would push back and they'd say, well, we're not making any decisions. It doesn't matter. Your, your discussion, your consideration, your, your thought, your receiving information, that is an action that could trigger uh, a meeting. So uh, if it's only two or three of you, it doesn't matter. It's not a meeting. Okay? Um, a lot of the uh, concern over the past uh, 12 or 15 years has been what happens if an email conversation among the group becomes contemplative? Someone says a group, sends a group email out, and then there's a reply, and then another reply that says, do they agree with the first reply? Well, as it stands right now, um, generally that's not been considered a meeting. But let me be clear, I don't want you to be the test case. So my <laughs> advice is keep your, keep your discussions over email limited to I received the message, and we'll discuss it at the next meeting. And you can't you can't go wrong. Stay on stay on the safe harbor. Um, in terms of the uh, uh, access to public records act, uh, uh, a, a public record uh, is anything that you do that is city related. Most of that's going to be uh, through the mayor's office uh, or the department's the exec. They're going to generate most of that paperwork, okay, or the clerk treasurer's office. Um, but if one of you sends an email to another one of you about city business, it does not matter that you don't have a city email address. That's a public record. Someone could make a request for that public record, and it's very difficult and very expensive to comply with a Public Records Act if I have to go to every one of you and say, did you send any emails on this topic to anyone between this, uh, this time and this time? Now, if either the mayor or the clerk treasurer or one of the department heads is part of that email, we're going to capture, okay? Uh, the, the difficult ones to capture uh, are among two council members sending an email about a city topic because that kind of contemplation, uh, you can do it, you know, uh, Ruth can send Marty an email about, about uh, uh, an ordinance or resolution, but if someone wants that information, uh, that, that's subject to the, the public record law. And so, uh, that can be difficult to track down, and so my suggestion is keep your emails to and from uh, uh, city employees, and, and those records, if ever requested, would be much easier to capture. Uh, uh, emails from department heads uh, uh, and the mayor to me generally are going to be considered privileged and, and not discoverable in ARPA, but uh, uh, I'm much more concerned with council members understanding the open door law. It's Frankly, someone making a public records request isn't going to find anything all that useful asking for stuff from council members because it's just not usually what they're looking for. They're usually looking for records of uh, action uh, and action because a city has a federal model. Action come from, comes from the executive generally. Sometimes it's financial information from the clerk treasurer's office. So I don't know that I've ever had a request for for uh, uh, council members uh, uh, communication, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. But my, my main issue is is we haven't talked about open door law in a while. We had some new folks, so I just wanted to kind of recap that and say uh, uh, that's that's my biggest uh, uh, biggest issue is that you simply understand if you look around, you walk in a restaurant and, and there, there are three other council members there and you sit down at the table, that's fine discuss the entree, don't discuss city business. So. <coughs> hey Beth, did you figure out about the emails that we had talked about? I didn't know there was an email. Yeah, there, I, there <coughs> are emails for each council member, but I don't know that anybody uses them because the list of the ones when she sends everybody, they're not, they weren't using this. So I tried to send one to John and he goes, I never got that. So, um, so are any of you using the council emails or did you even know you had them? Are they active? 
Well, I'm assuming so I need to check with the guy, but they're listed there, so I, would, well, I thought maybe you and I could try a test. Yeah, because I would like to do that to keep it easier to do. That was one of the suggestions, not that we had to do that, but the suggestion on the open door was sure. having an email that was provided by the city so that you could just keep everything there and it would be something, because it could get, like you said, very disconcerting to have a personal email here and other emails. So I'm, I prefer the city email just because I think it would be easier to keep track of. Well, it's never been easier to do that and have multiple emails on one device and not have it be an issue like it was 10 years ago. Yeah, because then if somebody had a records request, it would all be under that one specific email and there's no questions. You know. Well, I will talk with the, our IT guy and, and find out. But I mean, they're, they're there, but I just don't know if they're active. Yes, sir. I, yeah. I got another question at that point. I guess it's just now. Andy, could you address, like, I sit on the park board, or yes. I, I attend the park board meetings. I'm yes. not officially a member. I'm not a voting member of the park board. I just attend that meeting. How about emails that I'm involved in with that? Would I respond to those or float an idea to that group? That is, that is still subject to the Public Records Act because of your position and it's city related. Even though even though that's not the board you're on, it's still city business. Okay. Okay. I have a question um, related to, which made me think about that. So related to our function with the boards, the Animal Adoption Center, and now the Area Plan Commission, yeah. so I had asked Becca from AIM related to this. So what is our responsibility besides obviously bringing reports back? Is there anything specific that we as council folks are required to do from a um, not that official I, capacity? Not that I am aware of. Okay. So just reporting back the information to the council so any decisions that need to be made so there's no... Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a communicative tool okay. to have, have you at those meetings. That's easy. I don't have anything else, Mr. Okay. Beth, have you been made aware of any ADA concerns anywhere? No. Okay. No. Any other business? Anything else that we need to deal with tonight? I, I, I would like to bring something up. Food trucks. I think that we need to look at where that's at and and get rid of any ordinance that says that we can't do food trucks or they have to be located at very specific areas you know because if we're gonna expand what we're doing downtown food trucks have to be part of it we have an ordinance against it yeah we need to check i'm we just saying that we need to start checking into that okay. so that we can we can move forward with things also we'll put that on the agenda for yeah. discussion right for Another thing is outdoor dining on Main Street. This year, I will probably have the time, money, and energy to want to go out in front of Evergreen. I've looked around for the last nine years in other cities, <laughs> and I think that maybe we should look at maybe doing an ordinance that if you want to do outdoor dining on Main Street, it is a specific way. Okay, so Three Oaks, Michigan, they actually um, build a patio where the parking spot is and give extra outdoor dining during the summer months so that you can have like two or three sections out there. Um, and I, don't, I was thinking about other, other restaurants in town and I may be the only one. Okay, so the thing is, is, is because I have a liquor license, I have to be enclosed. They have a liquor license. No, they don't. Not Jaredis. You see, there's there's a technicality there. Arlington Pubhouse. Arlington does, but Arlington does not have outdoor dining. So there's so if Arlington wanted to do outdoor dining, they have to enclose their seating area. According to Indiana liquor law. Okay? That's the liquor board, and they're stronger than anybody else in the entire state. So <laughs> so you know, I, I I've looked so down in Carmel what they do is they go all the way out to the street and they walk through the middle. So there's 15 feet on Main Street. You have to have a five foot open area on any sidewalk to allow pedestrians. In Carmel, that five foot area is between 
the two. So so you've got it out by the street and up against the building, and and the pedestrians walk straight through. I think that's a great idea. What ends up being a problem because it's a problem in front of my building. So these are just things that we need to put on the agenda to discuss and really see. Is is that the handicap parking is right there? That's going to have to be moved if I ever want to do any outdoor dining. It's not worth my financial uh, to, to put three two tops out there. I, it's not worth it. One thing in order to increase business, nobody knows, you know, as they're driving past 30 miles an hour, they don't know that's a restaurant. But guess what will happen if I put outdoor dining? Whoa, what the heck was that? You know, it becomes visible. Whether people sit out there or not is not the issue. The issue is, is that it becomes visible that it's restaurants. It's more of an advertising thing than it is, you know, so it's something well worth, especially if we want the, the community to have the business that it had pre-COVID and to bring people back in. So that's another thing that I'd like to see us discuss. And I think we should discuss. I know I met with the uh, Main Street Group down on partnership uh, last Friday. Um, they would like to have more events. Um, other communities are seeing business <laughs> boosting are being boosted in downtown areas because of events more outside people coming in businesses are taking note of that hey you know we can maybe capture some of that uh, from uh, activity mm -hmm. so i know in the past we talked about how do we fill these empty buildings uh, and this may be the route uh, that would do that by having more outside outdoor events through the summer that we've already got some um, outdoor venues that are being looked at um, being not only looked at, but will probably happen maybe by summer. Um, so there'll be a lot more out, uh, downtown activity. So we need to figure out how we're going to navigate that in a safe way. But we don't want to safe. We don't want to childproof our city to death. Uh, we want to uh, make sure it's open and uh, we're uh, improving the quality of place. So. So do we start with, <coughs> are you suggesting we well, start we need with to find, the... Well, we need to find the ordinance we have in place okay. and then see how we need to, what we need to do with them. So that will be our assignment for the next four weeks of trying, because, you know, this is stuff we need to act on before summer gets here. So we'll see if we can dig up those ordinances and uh, see what we can do from there. Do we remember when the ordinance was actually passed, right? Was that a long time ago? So I think it well passed. Us, didn't it? Is there anything in force? Um, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, well, if you can't remember, it's probably, you know, We'll right. look it up. Right. And I, I doubt if we have anything on outdoor dining. I mean, that really is a liquor thing so far that I know of. I know there are rules and regulations, but, you know. Well, I think that Andy, I think as the point of reference, I think that the that the state house, they're actually having a discussion related to that. So there's a discussion about, um, I think Logan Sport was part of that conversation where they're looking at how can they potentially provide more opportunity for um, alcohol outside. So we probably I mean, just have to keep track of that and figure out what their ruling related to that subject matter. I don't know where that is in the process, but I know it's a point of reference that's happening. So the state passed a law last year, DORA, designated outdoor refreshment areas, they call them. Some just, I think it shows four that have them, four municipalities, nothing around here. So that's something we look into. Yeah. Well, and I know South Bend has the river walk. That if you, if you had a, if you wanted to put a little diner up or whatever, a hut up and serve liquor, it was $100 to get your liquor license. I know that that was up there on the, on the river of, up in South Bend. That was a big thing about 10 years ago that they, they received, which I'm sure other businesses was really ticked off because I heard liquor licenses were really expensive over there. <laughs> hey, Brian, you said those were DRA? Door, like Door the Explorer. Oh, like Door the Explorer. Yep. Okay. Uh, anything else? Do you want to mention what you're doing tomorrow? Uh, yes. State of the City address <laughs> out of the museum at uh, your registration at 1130, and uh, they got a comedy act about. 12.30 or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, 
I don't know if the chamber had a reservation set up. I thought you could just drop in. I don't know how I it works. I think that the registration was for the food. I was works. able still to register today because I missed the registration deadline running too. back and forth. Okay. So, well, if you um, can, stop out. Yeah. Okay. So. I mean, I don't think he wants is going to say no to people coming and participating. So. You might not get fed, but I think you should still be able to at least participate. Eleven thirty registration. They they got some business to cover around twelve, and they told me I'd probably twelve uh, fifteen or so when I speak. So, all right. So there's nothing else. Any motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded to adjourn this January twenty third, twenty twenty four meeting of Rochester Common Council. All in favor? Think about raising your right hand. You bet. Yeah. Yeah. We are adjourned. Yeah. We got something to sign. Oh, I got cracked my knees, but. <laughs>